bye-bye to this wonderful city. All right, so we're jumping onto a tuk-tuk which will take us to the ferry. The ferry will be taking us to Diani today. All right, so we've made it on the ferry which is gonna take us to Diani and turns out that using the ferry is actually free if you're on foot. Now, that also means that there's a lot of people that you have to compete with to get to the ferry in time and actually have a place to sit. The other thing is we made it extremely early here to the ferry at around 8 a.m. so that we don't sit in ferry traffic because usually when it starts getting later, more people want to use the ferry and it builds up a lot of traffic. And about 50 shillings later and one hour later, we've made it to the Diani Reef Hotel. And I have to say that Local transport over here is so reasonable. One thing though, when we got off the ferry, we were looking for a tuk-tuk because we had a lot of luggage. But when we got out, we found these tuk-tuks and they wanted to charge us a thousand shillings to bring us here. But then we decided to get onto a matatu which charged us 10% of the price, a hundred shillings. All right, so we've just checked into the resort and uh, the plan for today is we're just gonna chill for now because we've come through Oh, it was quite a long journey. It was reasonably priced, but it was a long journey. So I just want to chill for a while. For now, let me give you guys a quick room tour. One thing I've noticed is that Kenya is one of those luxury destinations where you can come to resorts like this and pay anywhere from $100 to $1,000 a night. It's a destination more tailored for couple getaways and like family week long vacations and honeymoons and stuff like that. So I wouldn't quite call Kenya a backpacker's paradise, but that being said, you can still budget travel in Kenya. It would be slightly expensive, but you can find places where you can stay at reasonable prices and you can find reasonable tours. What I've found is that you can do a lot of shared tours which would keep your costs down. But the problem with shared tours is that even though your prices are kept low, they're quite rushed. In my opinion, I don't quite enjoy shared and group tours, but that is definitely one of those ways which you can budget travel Kenya. Oh, hey, look, there's a monkey outside. Monkey, 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 monkey. This is one of the first hotels that I've seen that are serving up an African authentic meal. So there's sukuma wiki, there's chapati, roasted chicken and roasted fish. All right, so our first stop is here at the Colobus Conservancy and the entrance fee for citizens is 250 and for non-citizens is 750 shillings. Here at the Colobus Conservancy, they actually take uh, monkeys that are in distress, that have been hit on the road, that have been electrocuted by wires and stuff like that. And then they bring them here so that they can rehabilitate uh, before they release them into the wild. Our guide here is called Boniface, he's teaching us everything about this forest. It's actually forest that's growing on coral and it's one of the oldest forests. Now the trees can't go straight into the ground because the coral is so hard, so the roots pop back up. And if I remember what he said correctly, the root becomes another tree or something like that. It's so freaking interesting. Oh my gosh, guys, look at those. There's so many of them. Wow, they're such pretty monkeys though. So the Colobus faces three threats and all of those are human factors. One is road traffic accidents, two, electrocution from electrical wires, and three, poaching. The Conservancy has taken a number of steps to actually reduce the number of those conflicts between these Colobus monkeys and humans. And one of them is these ladders, which they've put across roads so that they can actually walk across instead of walking along the road and getting hit, which is really cool. Well, the good thing is from the last time I've been here, this place has actually expanded. And the last time I was here was about a year ago. So it's expanded quite a bit. And uh, I think that's because a lot of people that have been coming here and actually supporting this place. And you guys can support this place as well by coming here, volunteering, sending donations, stuff like that. And uh, I think it would be of a huge help. We were booked for a full board at the Diani Reef uh, Hotel and the food over there is really, really good. But I wanted to show you guys the different places you can eat at while you're here in Diani. One of my favorite places is here at a place called yeah. Sands Beach Bar and Restaurant. Yeah. 
Oh, 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 look at that. All right, guys, today I'm going to show you how to use chopsticks. Now, you hold them like this, like they're two little pencils, and then just grab it like that. Like that. And that's how you use chopsticks to eat pizza. Okay, so I've tried the best ice cream in Watamu, I've tried the best ice cream in Malindi, best ice cream in Mombasa, now it's time to try the best ice cream in Diani, and it's just here at the Sands. I am going to ride a camel on the beach because I've never vlogged myself riding a camel on the beach. Well, we're right on time. I finished my camel ride, I found a bunch of people who were playing volleyball and decided to join them and uh, I think you guys saw how terrible I am at sports, I'm like the worst. Anyway, and Hamdi, Hamdi went to a party in Lantana Galu being held by Whitecap and that's where I am heading to right now. Um, I'm kind of gate crashing this party but let's see what it's like. Well, before I head off, I'm going to feast first. One thing's for sure, you can never go wrong with Diani Reef's food. Now it's time to go and party! Party! What is up guys? Even though last night we ended up partying until really late, surprisingly I managed to wake up really early. Last night was quite fun though. It's another beautiful day here at Diani Reef. So a few hours later of editing, I've decided to come here to the beach to just take a small stroll. And I was talking to one of the staff from the hotel and they were telling me that Diani Reef actually has one of the longest beachfront stretches here in Diani. And the other thing that they do is they're, there's this whole project that they're doing of moving more towards an eco-friendly state. Stuff like getting rid of straws and picking up dirt on the beach, using glass bottles, stuff like that. And I really appreciate the fact that uh, hotels like this are moving towards that state of, you know, being environmentally friendly and trying to help save the environment and the ocean in general. It's currently 5.30 and we ended up spending too much time taking Instagram photos. So we need to make our way to Congo River, which is a place you've probably never heard of. That's because it's never spoken of. And I hope we're not late because the sun is setting fast. Here we are, where the river meets the ocean, where fresh water meets salt water, where... Okay, I'm trying to be National Geographic here right now, but oh my gosh, guys, look at that. So the sea is somewhere right over there, and right over here, that's Congo River just draining in. So we found these guys on a canoe, and we've asked them to take us on a canoe ride onto the river. We're just paying 400 shillings, so it's going to be so cool. Ali? Ah, so. Basically, this canoe is going to take us towards that end there because the sun's going to set directly over the river on that side, and that's where we're going to go and watch. So the last time I was here, the tide was actually quite lower. When I walked in, I was like, wow, this place looks so different because the tide is much higher. So the only bit of land is like somewhere back there. And yeah, the rest of it is all just beautiful blue water. Oh, it's, it's so lovely. Wow. So yeah, I mean, this is, this is a place that not many people come to. I don't even think many people know about it. So you guys definitely have to show up here and get a canoe ride because why the hell not? Guys, so I think I got the most incredible drone shots I've ever got. And then I noticed that this island looks like a shark. So I don't think it's been named before. So I am going to name it Shark Island. You're welcome. I'm 
gonna I'm gonna make a Google paint location called Shark Island so that you guys can come here if Google allows. Look at those colors! Oh my gosh! Wow! That side started lighting up as well. Tonight dinner is going to be downstairs by the beach. We've got a whole buffet going on here. So today they're serving Indian food. And I'm, ex I'm actually really excited because it's been like three weeks since I've gone without Indian food. Well, the performances have already started, but I'd like to enjoy my food first. So this is a very simple, simple song. Yes. This was probably one of the most unique entertainment nights I've seen at a hotel here in Diani. In fact, they actually did a whole Indian night theme and they started off with Indian dances and then they went to English and then went to Africa and, and then they brought people to dance with them and I thought that was really, really cool. The other thing was the dances were so good. Unfortunately, I couldn't record because uh, I was busy eating and stuffing my face. Um, but yeah, it was actually quite fun. So anyway guys, I'm gonna end the vlog over here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and if you're new here, consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace! Fan of the day.